Okay, so it's been a little while since I've done a video working on anything and it's because I have been upgrading the CNC machine. I have a larger plate. I've been using these nice little lock-in, lock-out clamps from Rockler, which I'm super excited to be using a little bit more of. And just learning, in honesty, I've broken a ton of bits. I've made a ton of mistakes, some of which I will document here and show you some of the things that I've gotten wrong. But for now, I have this one and also the laser machine downstairs, which is a new development. So let's talk a little bit about some CNC 3018 upgrades that I've done. And done, din, done, done, done. Some upgrades that I've done and some lessons that I've learned. Okay, like 93rd test carve with the new system. Turn spindle on. Spindle on. The spindle is on. Car. Okay, that was an unexpected distraction. There was just a bird in my garage and I helped him get out. So something just went horribly wrong with this carve. It immediately tried to carve through the entire depth, and I don't quite know why. Uh, looking at the machine, it looks like it's relatively okay, and it did the first, the first layer carve at a good speed, but then it just plunged immediately all the way through, which is not what you want to happen with the CNC. You want to do multiple passes at increasingly deep depths. The bummer is I literally just bought this drill bit set, so I literally just snapped off the first set, first bit of the new set. So let's take a look and see what went wrong. Do you notice the wobbly sort of angle right here on this one? And then the fact that this plunge right here where everything really went out of sync is not straight. The, the small, pass, the lower pass, the lower depth pass for the initial D20 design, that one was just fine. That worked out perfectly. But the deeper pass, even just going one millimeter in, here we're going against the grain and we're immediately fighting with every grain. You notice how it wobbles on every streak of the grain changing. And then here, not as much. We have one little wobble right there, which makes sense. Okay. And as soon as we start going with the grain, things just go really bad. <laughs> and then the system overcompensated and things freaked out and it didn't seem to work. So we're gonna take another attempt at this and try carving a simpler design and see if we can go with something a little easier. Okay, take two. We're going for a much simpler design, just some simple squares. See if we can carve them out of this nice little piece of walnut. I've set my home position. I've already raised the bits. Everything is secured and ready to go. Let's hope we don't have a catastrophic failure this time. I'm also gonna get the camera up on a tripod so I can watch it without holding the phone. So one sec. <laughs> Okay, what happens? It looks like the machine did it again. We had a bit of a jump here on the corner when we switched from to the grain to against the grain. And again, it just plunged in extremely rapidly. Did it go all the way through? It didn't go all the way through this time, but that is far deeper than just one singular pass. It's almost at an angle, which is really strange. So yeah, take a look. Depth right here is only about that far. Not too big a deal. That's about how far you'd expect the first cut to go. Depth right here is about triple that right before the bit sheared off. Okay, I'm in the house and in my office instead of in the garage because the carving side of things has me admittedly frustrated. I'm kind of annoyed with the fact that I've been breaking bits and having trouble just getting carves to work properly despite having the designs done for weeks now. 
has been a big blocker to bringing loot tables up to that next level for the next kind of product I want to offer, which is annoying. I think part of it is the machines that I bought. I've, I now have two of these CNC 3018s for reasons I will talk about in a minute. I am really shiny because <laughs> I was sweating out in the garage. So I have, like I mentioned, two of these machines but I honestly don't think that that's enough. So this is the original CNC 3018, which I bought and put together in the first video. The reason I have two is not because I loved it so much and it was so great and perfect, it's because this thing and the laser on it has been a bit of a problem as well. So you can see a couple things. I have oil because I was lubricating this because I have been successfully able to make these crit shit coasters, which I'm super proud of and you can buy now on loottables.com. Woo, shameless plug. But the laser module that I was given, when plugged into the motherboard back here, which came with the machine, which is not exactly the motherboard that's advertised to come with the machine, I have two choices. Either the fan can spin, the laser can fire, but that's it. I can't do both, not at the same time which has caused some concern for overheating, which means I can't really use the device the way I intended it. I've played around with a couple things. I've also had an incident where the coasters had this exhaust you see around the edge, just the vapor and the, the ablated particles from the laser burning into and smudging and being dirty and a potential fire hazard, which is why there's now also a fire extinguisher down in my basement. Uh, but uh, in working with that, I have been doing a little bit of upgrading here as well. I have another Rockler part. This T-clamp allows me to very quickly pop in a coaster, pop one out, pop the next one in, pop the next one out, pop the next one in, and very quickly work and cycle on projects, which is great. But airflow down here in this little enclosed section of my basement was not the best. So I have gotten this 10 millimeter uh, computer cabinet thing, basically. And when I've been running, I just have been plugging it in to a secondary power port on the back here that you can see, the one that would activate the fan but not the laser, the laser module, and just securing it with a piece of double-sided tape and letting it just blow air into that area to blow away the particulate that I mentioned so that there's no risk of spontaneous combustion of what I'm lasering. So I've been using a program called Lightburn and the free trial actually, I found out just ended. There's a 60 day trial, which is great. So I know it does what I need, but I have to go purchase the copy of that before I can continue the video and show you how the laser engraving is working. So time, scene change. So I think part of the problem could have been the horizontal calibration of the rails. I think they might have been just slightly off square from the plate where the actual wood is held. So I've readjusted all of the horizontal rails going by exactly one piece of wood thickness between the bottommost rail and the wood right here. And it was, this is wedged in, I can't do it right now because the washer's right there. So I am hoping, I am hoping that exactly this distance from the horizontal struts and some calibration and one more test should be enough. Okay, so I ended the carve a little early because it was going to hit that space above where it had just recently failed. So let's pop this out. This is basically a test piece of wood at this point. And take a look at what we're working at. Shake the sawdust off. That looks okay. Not the best, there was a couple burrs. Let's, let's see what we have to work with here. Progress has been made. So you can see right here, this bottom right corner, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done on the feed rate. I think I'm still pushing it a little too high. I did decrease the feed rate for this attempt. And it looks like we got moderately better edges, but the whole machine is under 
a little bit too much tension for my liking. The tabs to prevent floating island worked really well. I think they carved out at exactly the depth I want. That is a very easy cut with a handsaw. And when we had a plate of four of these done very quickly, we'd have one, two, three, four, and we just to be able to very quickly carve four and then take them downstairs to the laser engraver to engrave the numbers on them for the tokens, the specific type of token. This is pretty good. Let me get this popped out and let's take a look at it in, in full. So a bit of a blunt instrument. I just used one of my chisels to pop it out since this is already a junk piece of wood. So there's extra little tabs. So it came out pretty much how I was expecting. And let me focus. You know what? This is kind of perfect. Now, when this is finalized, I'd run this bottom edge through the router table, give it a little quick round over, make sure everything's good. And you'd have a number engraved on the top. It's designed to be like a bad guy token in D&D. It's exactly one inch by one inch square, so it fits onto a grid just kind of perfectly. So yeah, I don't know. Progress. I wouldn't say success yet, because there's still work that needs to be done on that upper edge, but progress for sure. Okay, feed rate reduced to 450 millimeters per minute. I'm leaving the plunge rate and the depth per pass consistent. So we can carve, we can confirm. It's secure, we have the bit size. Let's use the last home position. The spindle on. Literally right after I stopped the video, the bit dug again and we had the same problem as we did earlier. So let's pull this thing and figure out what went wrong. I think it's the same issue because that is way too deep for its first pass. So something is either wrong in the software and the software is not interpreting G-code directly and it's carving too deep. Or something is wrong with my machine, which would be shitty. Frustrating part here is that failure is not consistent. We just ran the same plan, the same code on the computer twice with differing results. One successful carve, albeit not perfect, and one uh, broken, super deep cut bit. So the only thing we changed was the feed rate. We reduced it to 450 off of 500. So maybe 500 is the magic number where it works and anything greater or less than fails. But that was my last 1.3 millimeter bit. I've just broke four in today alone. So I'm either gonna have to order more or alter the design to work with larger bit sizes because I can only go bigger. This is getting frustrating. Let's go back to lasers. <laughs>